Uh, my name is Luke Inman Semero. I work for Salesforce.com. Um, here's some of my information um, at Twitter handle. Um, I'm often on the IRC channel for the Selenium chat room, as Luke is. Uh, I'm a Selenium committer. Uh, I do lots of different things in the Selenium project, not anything in particular. But today I'm going to talk about uh, mobile Safari, uh, driving it with iOS driver, and so a little bit of cross-platform testing. Uh, so f the first question that I have is, uh, how did you or do you uh, test iOS Safari? Uh, I've heard a couple of different options that people have done in the past. Uh, one of them is take Chrome and just resize it, make it small, form factor, and, and try to test. There's lots of reasons why you shouldn't do that. Uh, many of them involve you're not really hitting your target uh, your target browser, you could be uh, a, totally missing uh, a bunch of JavaScript bugs that could be happening in your application. Um, there's a, a, a link down here, a nice little article uh, from Paul Irish talking about the differences in WebKit. And this will definitely let you realize how different Chrome is from even Safari, let alone uh, you know iOS. Uh, and his the quote out of there that I loved is, so uh, all web kits are totally different now. I'm scared. Uh, iPhone driver. Uh, this is the uh, now deprecated uh, application that the Selenium project uh, has in Objective-C. It uses a UI web view to um, you know, interact with uh, a native browser on an iOS device. Um, it currently has a laundry list of limitations because there's no API necessarily available in the public realm for handling alerts, cross-domain switching, window switching. Well, that's just a limitation. Quit right now doesn't do anything. Uh, and there's no such thing as uh, touch or native, uh, native events using iPhone driver. So generating a tap, a double tap, or swipes, um, those don't exist. Um, so what you used to have to do with that is you'd take Xcode, uh, download the Selenium project, take forever to build it, and then it gets deployed in here, uh, this little app. And when you start it and run your tests, it runs against this blank UI web view. That's nice, but really what you wanted to do was click Safari and launch that natively. And so to do that, if any, or probably most of you were listening to Francois, we have uh, iOS driver. Um, you should actually, or uh, I iOS driver itself is a complete um, replacement for iPhone driver. Uh, it does everything it can do and more. Uh, on a simulator, it has, um, it's only limited by what we've coded so far right now, it seems like, in the project for most of the Selenium API. Um, you can do alert, alert handling, window switching, um, touch events. Um, you, right now in the 0 0.6 release, you won't have many of them implemented, but there are many that will be available in future releases. Um, there's limitations, though, running on a real device. It is possible, and, and 0 0.7, as Francois was, uh, was talking about, will be able to run iOS driver on a real device, but you lose um, a lot of the native instrumentation um, uh, hand hooks and switches that you could do. So you lose out on alert handling, you lose out on window switching, and you, don't, you aren't able to do the touch events. But that's for real device only. Uh, so now the workflow for that becomes open a command prompt, start a jar, and then run the test. So it's much, much simpler uh, from a development standpoint uh, and even locally testing. Um, so let's look at it going. Um, I've got stuff. I've got a. A little demo of it. This is um, basically a test 
that I'll show you the code for in just a second, um, that this is running against iOS driver, mobile Safari, logging into Salesforce. Um, then it's going to go to our chatter feed page, create a new post, and verify that that post is the latest one on the feed. So just watching that go real quick. So one of the things you need to see is um, native typing. This is the native events typing, this is, so it's not injecting JavaScript to execute or to put in the keys. It's actually pressed in the keyboard. Um, here it's hitting share. There's a little bit of resize um, zooming in and zooming out that iOS does automatically for you, but oops. I'm not sure what, oh. That was what that was. Sorry about that. Um, so what I want to do is show you the test that that was, was just, uh, hopefully most of you are aware of how Selenium driver commands are, um, or the web driver interface. But this is instantiating a new iPhone driver that was a part of the um, existing API. Uh, so this is stock Selenium right now. Um, I'm using a, a web driver way to help me with timing, um, just getting the URL. So there, there's basically nothing, oh, sorry. There's nothing different here than what you'd normally have in um, the latest Selenium jar, um, which is great. You can, start using it right now, but who really codes like that? <laughs> Hopefully, none of you are actually testing or writing tests where it's basically driver commands and a laundry list of actions chained after each other. Um, what a best practice that we use and hopefully many of you also use is something called page object pattern. Um, so our test that was essentially a long list of just driver commands, um, turns into something where, let's, I can walk through this real quick. Um, I'm getting a property file, uh, this resource bundle. I'm uh, setting up a post test. Uh, in this case, I'm actually getting the class name of the driver itself, um, because in this case, I'm doing a parameterized test where I'm running multiple types of browsers. Um, we then can go, we are provided with a, a start initialization page. In fact, I was just kind of wrapped that in here. Um, and the first thing I do on this start page, which is a login page, which is a generic interface that only right now has one method, but it lets me log in and takes me to my feed page. So down here, I'm out of my resource bundle, I'm getting my username and password and saying log in. If we want to look at what I did for this, um, I should say that this, this mini project I've pushed to GitHub. So you can actually look at the source code too if you want. Just uh, Luke is seconf. Um, feel free to clone it and look at it. I did not check in the resource bundle with the password and username. <laughs> um, but it's uh, if you wanted to actually run this, you could. Uh, you could set up a, a development org on Salesforce uh, and, and um, test against it. Those are free to quickly sign up if you need them. Um, so the next thing it does after logging in is it creates a post, and that's on this chatter feed page API that was returned from the previous page object, and it has a couple of methods. Um, and as you can see, create post, you pass a message, and it returns you back the same page that you're on. So that's returning me back to my chatter feed page. And then a test isn't a test unless you're asserting something. So 
I'm getting the latest uh, string, string from the latest post. Um, I'm using, here I'm just uh, using fest assertion, so it's a little descriptive. I can tell what I'm, a little bit about what I'm comparing, um, and then the, what the value I should be comparing it against, so the string that I just created up here. Um, so this test case is a high-level uh, business scenario, essentially. We want to always have um, users be able to log in and post. This is a little bit more complex than I think I like a lot of tests to do. Um, <coughs> ideally, you wouldn't be necessarily testing the login functionality with the, the creating of a post, but um, in this case, uh, I was Demo. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, the interfaces that I have provided as a page object, I'm able to then run this test uh, across multiple browsers and multiple platforms, so Android and iOS, by implementing these interface these page object interfaces uh, up here. So I lump common mainly because right now the browsers act exactly the same. So I can run Firefox and Chrome, and um, both of them are the same exact Selenium web driver code. But Android and iOS are slightly different. Um, they have different flows um, in our app. So uh, these are actually against the native applications themselves. Um, so one of the things we can, I can show you real quick is, so login, I'm doing a little quick execute script to put the credentials in instead of sending keys, clicking the button, looking for a button that could appear, and then uh, making sure I'm on the chatter page. Uh, Android, well, I should skip that. <laughs> Uh, the reason why Android right now is commented out because uh, in my example, um, when, you've, when you've already got Cell Android running, you could have it logged in already, and I didn't want to, I was having a couple bugs in this demo. Um, here is the iOS driver one. So it's slightly different, I have my locators. Uh, up here, um, but as you can kind of see, for this is even for iOS driver native. My locators are relatively simple um, by ID, and by tag name. Um, those are discovered from, uh, if you were paying attention to Francois' talk, the inspector. Um, well, the resolution is going to kill me here. Uh, so this is the iOS driver inspector, um, which allows you to then kind of find the element that you wanted to work with, and then in this case I can find that that post link relates to this name, so that could be my ID, or that this, these are my locators. Um, the same thing happens for Celandroid. Uh, so in case you're not aware, Celandroid and um, iOS driver have very similar inspectors. <laughs> this is the Celandroid one. Happens to be that because Celandroid was written by a guy named Dominic Derry, at e also at eBay. So you can see why um, those are close. So, um, so we can find our locators, we can wrap our web driver logic into our page, um, into our domain specific language page object. Um, and let me go back to our test and live demo, let's see it run. Okay, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit, I've got Cell Android here for Android. I've got going to have Chrome and Firefox pop up, but then I also have got a movie of the um, iOS app. Oops. 
mainly because uh, the iOS app, uh, for me, I, I, I couldn't get it to reliably launch and all four of them go at the same time. So, come on. There we go. Okay. So this is the movie of the iOS driver one. Uh, right there I swiped, swiped it aside just to uh, um, enter my own credentials so you guys wouldn't see them. <laughs> um, this is going one at a time. Um, Android first over here. It's going to hit the post, create a new post, type the text. It's going to pull to refresh. And it found the post, but it went way too fast. <laughs> and now we've got Chrome going. So <clears throat> basically, it's one business use case uh, written with page objects that's able to run across all these platforms and devices at the same time. This, this code that I'm uh, that I put out there on GitHub is just stuff I whipped together truly last minute. <laughs> um, it's kind of inspired by we're, what we're using at Salesforce, but not quite the same. We have a lot of other logic to um, spin up or how we instantiate the drivers, how we um, set proxies, and uh, we also don't go to the login page to log in necessarily. Or we, we go to it just to set a cookie and then jump to the page under test. Um, there's no need to always test your login. Um, but that's, that. this is essentially what we're trying to do and move it forward so we can eventually have page objects that um, individual platform teams can help maintain and then other testers can develop their use cases and write high-level tests and just have it available for all browsers, all platforms. OK. Um, so since no one's really talking about Cell Android here at the conference, and I've been working on it for the last few months, I figured I'd hijack my own talk and <laughs> Tell you about it. Uh, Cell Android is uh, a new product by this man, Dominic Derry. It's been out for a couple of months now. It's, um, but it's basically an instrumentation based uh, testing tool um, that is essentially like if anyone knows Android Driver, uh, it's, it takes a lot of the code from that and leverages it. Um, it's not using the new uh, UI automator from Google, uh, but this was um, a way to enable you to get web view support with your native apps. So the cool thing about this is you do not have to um, change your app at all. Uh, you don't have to embed anything with it. You don't have to do anything with your Android app. So all you have to do to run this is uh, install your debug build, uh, and then you install the Cell Android APK with, signed with your own debug certificate and passed with your, um, your package, uh, basically your package name for your app. And so Cell Android then has hooks to launch, and Android lets you launch um, or make calls into another application um, if you're signed with the same cert. Uh, so all you have to do is ADB forward the ports and a shell instrumentation command, uh, and you're going. And it works even better on a real device. It works a lot faster. <laughs> Unless there's a couple of hacks to get um, the emulators working faster on x86. Um, but that has to mean your application under test is 100% compatible with the x86 libraries. Uh, in my case, um, we are not, and so I still have to use ARM uh, emulators. Uh, so this is 
kind of what I wanted to show of the world as I see it for our testing options on mobile with the WebDriver API. Um, don't be confused, there's a lot of other testing options out there, but this is more specific for and WebDriver API. <laughs> um, the Chrome itself is um, on iOS. Uh, I know some of the guys have been trying to make that work with iOS driver. Um, it's not available. I, I'm not sure if it's going to be available, uh, but they do have Chrome driver for Android. Uh, we've started using it uh, on my team, and it's uh, looking quite promising for uh, running Chrome browser tests there. I see a question in the back. Will do. Yes, the, the wiki page says uh, Chrome driver for Android is in alpha. It very much so is. Um, I'll leave it, since you're in Chrome, the uh, desired capabilities for the package kind of keeps changing and that's not exactly right for what the production, it should be like com Google Chrome, but it keeps on, every time I look at the page it changes and it's not quite for every user. Um, but other than that, it's been working. Uh, we've, got, we've, we've done a sample set of tests against it. We're uh, in the works to try and to roll that out in our test bed. Um, Firefox, Dave, David, I don't know. He, uh, he's been doing Marionette as he just showed you just a few minutes ago. Uh, that works on Android. Uh, I do not think they have anything um, for iOS. I can be corrected if I'm wrong. Um, the, uh, sorry, I meant to, default browser, so this is mobile Safari. Um, so as, as you see, uh, iOS driver works for mobile Safari. Uh, it's in the works for um, using it on real devices, that'll be 0 0.7 release coming out soon. Um, Android, I know no, um, nothing available right now to launch the native browser and actually drive it. So what you can do instead, uh, there is the Selenium um, Android driver, but that falls don't know why I didn't list it, but that falls down into the hybrid app because essentially it's embedding a UI web view which is different than the actual native browser. Uh, native apps themselves, we have iOS driver, Appium, um, what used to be called native driver, now is called app driver, but both of them have since been deprecated um, or not, not hugely active supported lead. <laughs> Graham's right here in front who's, who's got the current fork. Um, he, but it's not, not being active, <laughs> let's just say that. Um, let's see, uh, Appium and Selendroid for your native apps. AppDriver also is there. There's one person who's semi-maintaining that. Um, Appium is using for, for native only um, UI Automator. So you can actually end up doing more things than you can with Selendroid, um, like switching context, switching apps. But what you don't have is hybrid support. So I, if you have an embedded WebView, UI Automator does not allow you access into it. Um, and so that's down why. Uh, Salesforce has chosen Selendroid because we have embedded web views. Yes, sorry. I've been looking forward to that oh so much. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, as I'm hearing, in the future UI Automator will help support web views, but it doesn't now. Um, no offense to Google, but that doesn't help me right now. <laughs> it's okay. Um, all right. Um, 
Does anyone have questions? I've been getting a lot of different questions on but basically what is supported, what isn't supported, what do each of them do? Uh, am, I, am I not really being clear here, or is, do some people have some questions? I know I've gotten a lot in the last few days around this, but any, any questions on that? Yes? One, one central tool. Uh, so it would be very nice if one thing did everything. Um, of course, uh, I actually don't believe that. Um, I believe that the WebDriver API is the one central thing to be using and consuming. And each browser or each device or each platform uh, should implement that protocol. Uh, Yes, so as, lo as long as there's support, and, and I don't know if Simon's in the room, but it, it's his goal, uh, and it's a, a part of the project's goal, is to get vendors who are uh, creating the platforms, creating the browsers, to supply that API. And so it would be built from the ground up inside the platform that you're testing against. So the great example right now is Mozilla with Marionette building the WebDriver API straight into all Firefox products. That's, uh, when that comes out for us for public consumption, that'll be excellent. There'll be no more you know, Firefox driver in the Selenium code base, and um, it's all handled by Mozilla, and I, I'm looking forward to that. Yes? Uh, I noticed that the Selenium driver IRC panel, but it's not very active. It's not really ready for public support? It's there. Um, Dominique is in there. When he's there, he's, he's in Germany. So, uh, you know, if you're in Europe, you might hit him on normal daylight hours there. Uh, I, I'm usually in it every day. Um, I don't see very many requests for help or anything like that, but I, I'm also in San Francisco, so I'm usually, you know, West Coast hours. Um, I've seen a few other people um, be in there, but yeah. If, Feel free to join us. It's not very active. Um, you could also join the Selenium group and try to see if anyone else is in there that knows anything, but. <laughs> yes? Ah, how, how easy is it to go from iPhone driver to iOS driver? Extremely very, very, very easy. Uh, as in, we have replaced our iPhone driver tests and are currently using iOS driver, and more tests started passing. <laughs> Sorry, we have a follow up? No. So, okay, the question is is if, it, if you have a, a test running on iOS driver, is it going to run on Celandroid? Uh, I'd say definitely not. Um, Celand Assuming that question leads into you're talking about a native app with iOS driver and a native app with uh, Android, your locators are likely to be different uh, unless you have some magic backend that has mapped all locators for all elements to both for both applications. Um, I don't know anyone doing that in development right now, uh, especially not where I'm at. So your locators are going to be very different. Um, your timings are potentially going to be different. So when you click on something, you might be able to immediately have uh, access to the next element in, say, iOS driver, but in Android, you've clicked it, and now it's, you know, does something, but uh, you, you actually need to add the, you know, expected condition weight. Um, so my, my suggestion is the best practice is to use page objects, um, create interfaces for your page objects, implement those interfaces for each platform, like Android for cell Android and uh, iOS, iOS driver, uh, and then, you know, you, Potentially, you could do it for each of your browsers uh, if you need to. But then, um, come runtime for your test, depending on which browser is launched, you inject the appropriate page object that's from the particular um, device or platform. And um, that, essentially, if you, if you, you know, stick with the interfaces, then it, it should be relatively seamless, I hope. <laughs> uh, Okay, more questions? Yeah. Does this app team also support the default browser 
Yes, I'm sorry. I left that. I, I, it does. Yes, it does. So I, I thought I tried to edit this slide beforehand, but uh, the default browser is supported in Appium. Um, I'm not certain what their level support for. Uh, you guys can talk to it about um, real device. Um, but uh, by default, also, iOS drivers can pure native events. I don't know. Does it, is it Appium guys in the, in the room who want to speak up and say something? I, I'm, I'm, anyway. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Dan. OK. So yes. Any complaints? Okay. Thank you, guys.